Planning Board meeting will now come to order. Could I have a roll call? John Eichmann. Steve Caswell. Michael O'Brien. Lori G. John Cutler. Craig Smith. Jason Paraskeva. And if everyone would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have two upcoming meeting dates. Um, again, monthly this coming year, if we need additional meetings, we always have the ability to schedule them on the first Tuesday, but our next two meeting dates as of right now are January 15th and February 19th. Um, and we have two sets of minutes to approve. The first one is August 21st. Do I have a motion to approve the August 21st minutes? So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You are not here. I was not. I abstained. Okay. I have uh, <laughs> one abstention and the motion is carried. And has everybody had a chance to look at the September 18th minutes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the September 18th minutes? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight is a scheduling of a site visit for Hopewell Easy Storage at 866 Route 82. Sorry, 886 Route 82, excuse me. 896. Well, okay, well, Six, all right. Wow. On, 896, Pam. sorry about that. All right, good evening all. <laughs> my name is Mike Nessler. My father is Doug Nessler. I assume some of you know him. He is the owner of Hopewell Easy Storage along with Mike Gillespie. And um, he's getting on in years now. He's hit 85. In the last couple of months, I have uh, stepped down from my previous job and have stepped in and uh, started working with him okay. and getting an idea of how it's going on. Up until now, just conversations over the dinner tables about all I've been involved with the business. So starting to ground, working my way up. Okay. One of the first issues uh, I asked him about was where do we stand with the town? And so uh, beginning of November, I sat down with uh, Scott Bryant and Brenda to review where we stood. And we had uh, the organization there has three open building permits, two applications, and an issue with the site plan. So I started looking into them to see what it was all about. And I've been able to close out two of the three permits in this past month. And the next mission I moved on to was the site plan. Um, in essence, if I describe the, uh, the facility, it's divided into thirds. The front third is the self-storage. The middle third is the uh, older block industrial building. Mm -hmm. And the back third is the boat and RV. Okay. In 2006, uh, they uh, amended the site plan to add the boat and RV. And since then, nothing has been uh, submitted to the town. Okay. Um, since then, uh, there are, there are some uh, two buildings of self-storage that were never built, and one of the two buildings of the boat and RV has not been built. Okay. They still plan on being built eventually. The biggest uh, issue with the site plan now is the temporary use of those locations of where the other development has been not been done yet. Okay. So, so my, uh, my father's partner, Mike Gillespie, is preparing an amended site plan. It was not ready for tonight. So I hope to. That's okay because uh, you're not actually an application before us. Okay. Um, so that's okay. Yep. So he's uh, preparing the amended site plan, which I hope to be able to uh, present to you uh, next month. Okay. Um, so I think what we wanted to do, and Scott, the just I think after your meeting, we had the discussion to say we might schedule a site visit. So the board members who probably haven't seen your plan in quite some time. We know that there's a few things you haven't built and some things you probably did build. Just to give us a little bit of familiarity before we look at the proposal for any site changes you want to make or if you want to keep things the way they are. Um, we just want to kind of get a feel sure. for, for um, what's going on I would uh, I would say it's more of a, a as-built. Uh, what has been approved, what it is, is uh, what we would like to do. Okay. It's just some of these temporary uses. Um, um, would it make more sense to submit the amended plan to look at before you do a site visit? Um, you can certainly do that. We would want you to submit then a full application to us. I think the thought was, uh, and Scott, just stop me if I'm, if I'm incorrect, but if, 
if there were things that you wanted us to see first, if there are things that you said are temporary, you know, it might change what you would submit. But I'm, I'm, I guess I'm indifferent if you want to submit the, the amended plan first and we can look at it. What's occupying yeah. that space? Basically in the rear of the, uh, in the, in the back third, the boat and RV, mm -hmm. instead of putting up a second undercover, we paved it and put stripes on it. So there's no cover over the parking that was always designed to be there. Okay, so you have RVs and boats in Correct. that space. Okay. Yep. And it was supposed to be on the on the uh, the submit the approved uh, submitted site plan shows a building there for po parking a boat and RV. We have one now. It was showed a second one. We haven't put up the second building. Instead, we paved it and put parking on it. The other use is uh, in the middle part of the uh, site. There are two more self storage buildings approved. In the meantime, EPA Superfund came in uh, and asked for permission to put in uh, their office trailers there. That's what's sitting there instead of the boat, uh, instead of the self-storage <coughs> buildings. That's basically it. The uh, industrial building, I could be more accurate in showing what's going on around it, right. but basically that's the only change to the site plan is the temporary use of the um, uh, trailer complex and the paving in lieu of the building. How long is the trailer going to be? And if I could just add, I think there's a second sign, right? There's a second <coughs> monument sign that we just want to get cleaned up. That is going to be shown on air. Right. There's two signs. Right, because the original plan just showed the one, and you have Correct. the second one. Yep. And I think the outdoor corrals have been expanded just a little bit. Same type of use, but just expanded. <coughs> so? With the cars and RVs and things towards the rear, in the back third, has there been any concerns or complaints about it, or is it a visual? Problem or is there any? No, I guess it was a. It? It's just non-conforming use, or that's it. It's just, just non-compliant. Non non I've never put the structure, yeah, but they put it in the pad to yeah. put them. Okay, so I'm just. I think there's some also some parking spaces that were supposed to be installed that weren't, but they may have gone hand in hand with the building. So you know, just to try to get a better hand up. But I mean, I, it obviously functions all right. How long are the trailers going to be there? I believe the job is a three-year job. What year are we in? I think Weren't there bollards or something too that would needed to be installed around a couple of the buildings? Did that all happen on your original plan? The, uh, the Knox box missing. Conti under. came to you there directly. There a couple of little things like that I thought from last time. I believe Conti came to you directly. We were uninvolved. Their office trailers do have some concrete blocks around them. I have no idea well, what I they asked for. I around your buildings where the, the buildings. parking was set up. I thought I remembered there were some tight turns in the. Oh. in the site the itself. That, there was some circulation. Yeah, there was something going on where okay. we wanted some parking control. Uh, you know, this, is, this is great that you're, you know, compliance-wise, but I mean, what's, is this part of like a longer-term plan? Is there? No, um, I had a conversation with the town engineer, said, why don't you come in front of the planning board and get the plan up to date? More of like preemptive. Let's say they want to refinance or do a sale. There's a municipal search. We go out there, it doesn't match the plan, and they get jammed up. So I think to be ahead of that curve, they just want to get things cleaned up, so. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. So, so we had you on our agenda tonight strictly just to be able to schedule a site visit. It sounds like you're leaning more towards submitting the application to us for the changes, uh, even though they're as built, but changes to your existing site plan. Um, I guess I, Scott, is it something that you feel strongly about that we need to go out there if the applicant is? Like you say, you can go either way. Okay. Whatever. What's your preference? Did, did you prefer the board to I'd come see submit it? I submit the uh, the amended site plan, and you can see how what has changed, and see if you think it's wor worthy of a site visit. Okay. Okay. And I think the Sub next thing to discuss no is whether you know this can be considered a minor amendment or not. You know, I think potentially it could be just a minor amendment. And, until we have the revised plan, though, I, I don't, yeah, I'm right. not sure we can say that tonight. But definitely, right. we would, if we we're able to do that, that's something the, the board would absolutely consider. Along with submitting the amended, also let's see the old at the same time. We should, yeah, I think we have the old, the original, yeah, I'm just, I don't so mean the original, the current it. plans in the office now. Mm -hmm. We should have, yeah. The other thing attached to that will be an updated, um, better word, tenant list with contacts. Who is in the building? It was asked of me who is in the building, uh, so I can give you an updated list on that with their okay. contacts and all as part of that uh, submittal. Okay. That's right. not for each of the spaces, just the actual more The actual industrial, uh, industrial uh, building in the back where the tenants are, <coughs> not, not in the self-storage or the right. barn. Right. That's right. not a concern. It's the major building. There's six or seven tenants in there. Okay. 
And again, just as of right now, your plan is not to change what you have out there and what you're submitting to us isn't going to represent something you want to change at the site. Not at all. You're just submitting to us, okay, here's what it looks like now. Yeah. Okay. And they want to preserve their right to install those buildings shown yeah. on the current. Okay. Correct. Uh, well, I think opinion. then as long as it's outlined as where you have parking now that was approved as a building, as long as you're indicating a temporary use and, mm -hmm. you know, we can, I'm sure there's a way we can um, figure out a motion that allows the temporary use until such time as a building permit or something like that. Yeah. The only wrinkle, I'm not sure, like we got to maybe look at the lighting. Okay. Because when the building went up, I think there would have been fixtures mounted on that building. On the building. And now that it's just parking, I don't know if you uh, added any lights or not, but that might be something that needs to be Yes. Like I can show you, you this. You did add lights? Oh, yes. Okay. Series of five of them, and uh, I can show you the style of them. I got a picture with uh, made for that day to show you. But yes, that was all addressed when I did it. just put up 10 feet away. <laughs> Right? I mean, <coughs> but, they but the idea is that you have proper lighting in his space, not yeah. the fact that you can look over can't to be our space. In the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have to be a competition. We're <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, All right. Then I think we're good. Thank you for Very coming good. out tonight and, and having right. the conversation See with us. We appreciate then. it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item on our agenda is a minor modification to uh, the Tots and Us site plan at 535 Old Hopewell Road. And I think, do we have anybody here? I thought we got an email that that was being adjourned to yeah. next year. Oh, we did. Right. I'm yeah, sorry. Right? My, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move that to our January agenda. Sorry about that, Pam. Okay, then let's move on. The next item on our agenda is a sketch plan for Atlantic Textile Recycling at Acme Plaza on Route 82. Hey, how are Great. you? Come on, you can come on up. Yep. Good evening. Hi. Everybody. Good evening. <laughs> yes, I'm here to uh, permission for uh, two recycling bins placing in Unity Plaza. We are the Acme's uh, supermarket. Mm -hmm. uh, we do service three times or more as we need it. So our, um, I, I can add the service, extra service, if we see any issues, and we will try to keep the area nice and clean. That will be my guarantee. I will personally send the trucks, transportation to do the good service for this location. Okay. So you're proposing so, um, two bins, is that two, yes, still correct? Yes, that's right. Two bins, that's what, what the property was approved also. Brickstone property, that's where we have the contract. Okay. So two bins and three times service, uh, service in time or more if you need it. Is per it week? Like a, what's that? In, I'm sorry, go ahead. Per, per week, you mean? Per week. Per week. Is there Usually, we do one or two the bins? times. Like one is household items, or is it's all just clothes? Uh, mostly, it's all clothes and shoes. Sometimes, small toys. Okay. Maybe books too. So. But it's only. But either one can go in either bin. Exactly. It's not like there's going to be. Okay. Yes. And what happens to these things? Where do they go? And. Yes, it's all going to be sorted separated kids women's men's cottons uh, many different style <clears throat> about 80 percent is going to be overseas africa india pakistan south american countries that's where is the most users second hand 20 percent it will stay here like at thrift stores and uh, um, charities maybe only 20 percent what's the best quality is it only stays here okay. um, the rest of the things it's going to be out, okay. exported. So it's a charity? No, it's a recycling company. Okay. okay. Do you have any signs or anything other than what would be right on the bin itself? There's no separate signs or anything mm, like that? No, no. Just so all the signs we have, it will be on the bins, nothing outside. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, labels like it says clothing, shoes, donation center, but it's, it will be all, everything on the bins. Okay. Can I ask, why did you pick that spot? I mean, it <laughs> tends to be, it, it's in a location where yeah, people are usually looking the other way. Right. No, so it's, why that spot? <laughs> I'll tell you. 
<coughs> it's not specifically this part. This is the company what we have the deal, the property. Name is Bricksburg Property. They own the property land. Okay. They are the commercial real estate company. So they give us two or three locations and we picked uh, one this and I think Philadelphia too, another one. So that's the only reason we are here. Not, okay. We don't have any specific uh, reason to be here. Okay. We just picked the place. And then I think the location you provided to us, Scott, you said it's in a bank of currently four or six parking spaces? I think spaces? there's six spaces there. I think you're going to occupy yes. two. And I'd right. like to just see them adjusted over a little bit to be in the center, two spaces of the six, as opposed right. to the in that yes. corner, right. just, just to help with the sight distance. Right. Yes. Uh, can I show you? Sure. you see. Here's the center, and this is what we Right, so prefer. instead of these two spaces, <coughs> just make it the two center spaces right here. Right, okay. So right here and right here. Okay. Not a big adjustment. Not a problem. Okay. On the other side, right side. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from board members? Um, do we want to wait and see? I mean, how will these things be marked? Like, what will they... Will they be trying to be eye catchers? Will they be just one color with a small sign? I mean, what are we? Uh, what you mean, what will be looking, uh, what yeah. kind of, okay. It's a green color beans, like a green and white. We picked a natural color. We don't want to use like a yellow, red or something to, to keep the you know, natural views. So color will be yellow, I mean uh, green. Is there white or black layouts on it? Signs. Okay. Papers touching the mic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Side. And are they are they the typical size that we see? I, I mean, I've seen clothing type collection bins before. Are they the typical size or are they different unique no, size? No, it's a typical size, five feet by five by six. Five by six. Okay. That's always the typical sign. Nothing uh, different. Okay. So are these standard? I mean, so it wouldn't be inordinate for us to ask if we could just see a picture of one of these things. Uh, you want to see the picture? So I mean, are they they're standardized? Uh, I will look if I yes. Uh, I maybe have it. I'm not okay. sure here. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah we wouldn't mind seeing. I picture. submit that'd a picture great. here. To, uh, okay. Yeah, no problem. I gotta see my folder if I have okay. it with me. Go, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Michelle, while we're looking for the picture of the bins, there's nothing that stops us from being a minor site plan something, modification, is there? Something okay. like that, but green. Ah. Green color. Okay. okay. Yes, something like that. Okay. Can we ask you to just provide, a, you don't have to take that out, but provide a, a copy of that to the just planning like office for our yeah. file as well? It's okay if you do it tomorrow or something like that, yeah, that's no fine. Problem. The board may want to consider perhaps a time limit where you'll have it come back for review, like maybe say a year and take a look at it again, see if there's any issues. Yeah, that's a good question. Do you have a specific time of year that these stay out? Are they out year round? And how long are you planning to have them there? Uh, how long to get started? You mean, uh, uh, what was the question, please? No, when you put them there, how long will they be there? Oh. 12 months a year? Or? We have, uh, I think, uh, nine or 12 months contract. No more than 12. 12 is the top. We have a 12 month contract with the property on it. Yes. Okay. 12 months, uh, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. But if they renew and that we have contract, to we renew still want to visit yeah, here and make sure everything is. Right. And how Sorry. often are they policed as far as if they're full and emptied and? Uh, we come, we pick the dates like uh, three times, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday or whatever. And There's a lot of times with these type, type right, of bins exactly, that overflows. Right. Yeah. But beginning, we are coming every day to see, what, to pick the date, the trend right is. time, when we're gonna, because over the weekends it's busier, Monday, slow, so we come every day, then we pick the dates. Um, your, your bin, you said there's writing on the bin. Is there a contact phone number or something like yes. that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, 
Because in the event that there was something happening, like to Tom's point, yes, if there was an the main, overflow or something like that. The label will be the company's information, website, contact information, okay. email, everything. Okay. All right, great. Any other questions or comments from board members? Scott, you're comfortable. Any other changes aside from the location to move them over a couple spaces? Yeah, I'm fine. That's it. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the Atlantic Textile Recycling placement of two uh, clothing bins on the Acme Plaza site on Route 82? Do we have a so motion moved. to approve? Do you want to just amend it for a period of one year? Or <clears throat> yeah, why don't we put it for a period of one year, which year? matches his contract. I, right, I agree. Okay. It'll give him, him a chance come, to reassess yeah. and us you a chance. You would just come yeah, back to us in a year if you wanted, if you were continuing with them. Yes. Okay. So, um, John, are you going to yep. amend the motion to mm -hmm. put a time yep, limit of the year. a yep. year from now? So moved. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have Merry a good Christmas. evening. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. all by himself. <clears throat> Okay, the next couple items on our agenda are the referrals from the town board. Um, Michelle, can I just have you walk us through? I know you gave us the uh, corridor revitalization presentation last time, but if you want to just walk us through, I think there's been a few changes. So there's been a few um, revisions, although this has not been yet approved by the town board, so there still could be additional changes that the town board makes. But currently, um, we're looking at the Hopal Hamlet and Route 52 or two corridor revitalization as a special permit to allow um, second, second story um, residential. Okay. So it's just the main revision is that it's now a special permit. Correct. Okay, so it preserves the existing zone, not a separate, okay. Correct. And then do you want me to go forward and with who, the other who two? issues the, the permit? Is that part, and I apologize, I, I haven't, I know it came out we just do. a day or two ago. It'll be the planning board. It'll be the yeah. planning board. You're giving okay. us the authority. Okay. Any, any other changes? Not at, that I know of right now. Okay. So, uh, and I know we had talked about this. Michelle provided the presentation to us last time. Do we have any feedback to give to Michelle now that we can share with the town board before they bring this back in front of their board? Michelle, I guess as we, um, just, to, just to start us off, I think you know, we had talked about this isn't something that necessarily forces somebody to change their property or anything like that. So. Um, as far as uh, what we would do to helpfully encourage things like this, what's the typical next step for us? Is it, is it looking at you know, parking? And we talked about parking being probably one of the major concerns to be able to do something like this or make it viable. Is it that sort of thing where the town considers something or do we just wait for applicants of property owners in these corridors to come forward and say, yeah, I want to try it? Well, um, we have currently on the books a special permit that allows um, the planning board to adjust the parking. So currently right now, if someone came in and they didn't, like let's, let's say they were limited in their parking, they could come to you with the proposal to put in a second you know, floor residential. And then they would also probably come to you as well for some sort of waiver or um, relief on the parking. Okay. So you would have a control over that. Um, and that's the way it would work right now, but it's a separate special permit, so they would actually probably come come to you for two special permits right now um, unless we uh, unless we added language to the special permit which we talked about potentially doing in the um, in the mixed-use one that just automatically allows the planning board to consider that parking as part of that special permit which and just make which, it a condition of the special permit. correct okay and it may just follow the rules of the existing special permit which is probably the better way of doing it but right now it's 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 two separate but we may end up adding language because that was discussed um, so are you asking how we sort of, how we make this happen? I mean, the idea behind it obviously yeah. is to allow people to um, invest in their properties and hopefully improve the appearance, out, outside appearance of the properties mm -hmm. and allow them to get additional income from the properties that they currently have. And I think at, at, that, at this point, I mean, that's basically what it, that's the limit on it and that's what it allows folks to do. But eventually, hopefully, um, we will see um, property owners taking advantage of it, and once 
couple of property owners do it, I think additional people may follow. And then if we get additional investment, new development in that has some, potentially has some residential aspects to it, we may be able to see some more changes going on along the corridor. Mm -hmm. and, and also, um, we should be hearing pretty soon about the grant application for um, the roadway improvements. And I think, okay. I mean, if we were fortunate enough to get that grant, that would also help spur along some of these changes. Okay. The way I interpreted this is, you know, there's a, a really nice statement of purpose in here that starts this. And I think, you know, we as a board have to, you know, there's going to be, a, I think, people who will be, you know, struggling with certain provisions down below. But I think it makes very clear what we're intending to do here. And I think, it, you know, the ask to this board really should be or is that we will do everything we can to support these things and to move them along as expeditiously as we can. I think it's an essential first step. Yeah. Um, and, ho and hopefully is, it's the, the beginning of something that, that starts to um, foster some, some real revitalization of the, the Hopewell Hamlet. Have any property owners expressed any active interest yet, or is it a little too early? Yeah, there have been folks that have um, expressed interest about putting residential in, um, mostly not over existing buildings, but actually removing buildings and creating a new building with commercial below and, and um, residential above. So actually taking out an entire, entire building and rebuilding, um, yes. rather than just retrofitting a building. But we would be looking at both. Possibilities. I mean, obviously, it depends on on the existing building and whether or not it can actually carry a second story, or whether mm -hmm. or not it's appropriate for a second story, and what the use is below it. Have Have we um, checked with the fire department to make sure if we're allowing buildings up to three stories mm -hmm. that are close to each other on these, you know, more dense areas of the town that we're comfortable that they're able to manage firefighting. Well, they would uh, they would absolutely be referred to if anyone came in for an application, okay. but it should have. And the answer to your question is yes. The board of commission has said that three stories would be okay. Okay. Actually, would, <coughs> would we be requiring sprinkler systems in these buildings? That's up to the state code. Some will be required depending upon, I guess, the commercial use down below. But that'll be under the state fire code, whatever is required. And as we know now, the um, state fire code has been amended. As far as the sprinkler systems, they're not as onerous as they used to be. The sprinklers in residential units can be attached to the uh, domestic water supply coming into that unit. So it, it lends themselves to be much more available and usable. So. And I believe actually um, the first time I presented the, to the town board, we were at the Board of Fire Commissioners, uh, the, the building. They were there at the, the meeting the, where the initial presentation was. Are we um, working on our master plan also? Um, we've been talking about potentially, you know, thinking about redoing the, the master plan, so I think that's definitely. I mean, something of this size. Mm -hmm. All of this was envisioned. Yeah, it? this is this was definitely, in, this was sort of envisioned actually in the in, in initial plan now. Mm -hmm. Existing uh, um, Hamlet overlay plan. Yeah. But it envisioned this, but uh, to your point, the town board has discussed the possibility of starting a master plan process, but uh, I think they're commissioning Michelle to apply for a grant because that's an expensive process sure. to go through. Yeah. So, yeah. I think actually today I was reading the CFA, the Consolidated Funding Application Grants were awarded today, and I believe Poughkeepsie got, um, town of Poughkeepsie got one, I think it was the town, it might have been the city, um, got a grant to do their master plan. Hmm. Nice. So let's just come back to parking a little bit. Um, there's, I've seen some, some towns where there are developments where they actually put the parking below ground. Mm -hmm. Is there any contemplation of that for East Fishkill that would allow us to have parking, maybe not visible from the street, but for residents, maybe in, an up, in upper floors, they could have below ground parking? And I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, I actually think that that may be happening in the... Um in Fishkill right now, although I'm not sure if the, the bottom floor is parking or not, but there, there's residential apartments going up. I don't know if anyone's been through the yep. um, in village recently, but right. there's new apartments going in back there. Um, and I'm not sure what they're doing for parking because they're taking up most of that lot. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'll have to look at that next time I go through. So your, your off street parking here is specifically referencing allowing people to park to the rear of the building or not requiring parking for the commercial building. But my thought was, what if somebody wants to put it Underneath, down a floor? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I mean it, why not? Yep. But I guess I just, I don't know if this would restrict us from saying that's permissible or not. That's my, probably really my question. Because no, I see it more and more like as, as you, Travel, a lot of the new construction, the parking goes underground and then everything else is ground floor up. You're talking about um, all actually building underground or actually putting the parking and then building, putting like the garage below and then the building two stories above it. I've actually seen both. I've seen, and I've, and I've seen what I, I don't, it's probably not split level, it's not the, the right purpose. word, but where it's sort of quasi underground, you can see a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. So, so the daylight gets into the parking area, but it's really not like a full above ground kind of parking garage type structure. It's really just the bottom floor of the building. Well, that would really be... Uh, that would defeat the purpose a, of having commercial I don't, space then. There's that's nothing... what I'm saying. There, there's others... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, right. There's others where you... Mm -hmm. there, there's like a little way you can no. pull in and be under the building and you still have a ground floor commercial okay. space. Okay, all right. Okay. But it's nothing that would prohibit that, but you would have to do the calculation as to whether that constitutes a story. Mm -hmm. So if you want to put the parking underneath, uh, you may only Is be able to have story? two stories above mm -hmm. it. That would constitute the three stories. And okay. even if, um, you know, like in Hope, in the Hamlet itself now, there are some buildings where you go down the back. So in the back, it could be three floors, but in the front, it would only look like two. So in that case, you could put the parking underneath, but you would still be bound by the three-story limitations. So. So do we want to be bound that way, or do we want to consider allowing a below ground? Well, it, if it's underground, I guess that's a basement, which wouldn't count as a story. Well, that's why, I, yeah. I know, so you've got to look into the, the way you calculate stories, and that's usually the way from you define the, the, stories the and virgin the ground level, and it's a whole complicated oh. engineering full employment act measurement. But There you go, Michelle. Go figure it out. But, but that's just some <laughs> feedback. I mean, we, we were... Yeah. Our next meeting, please. <laughs> well, it's really for the town board, right, to consider. I don't think we have to solve it. Well, it's it. a recommendation. I mean, right. yeah. I think this is a good first step. Well, and I can look at I can look at some other codes and places that may, if, if you can think of any locations in particular where you've noticed a building like that, I can go back and look at their codes too, see how they define it. Yeah. I've and I think part I of the concept that. is that it's to try to encourage existing owners. Would this help them um, be able to? Uh, clean up the facades of the building, change them, and change the feel of the hamlet. Uh, so this is, we'll yeah, give you this. Yeah, that's probably more of raising that. and building new right, versus a right. rehab, yeah. And that's of course, fair. we would love to have it extend probably over to the 82 card or over in Fishco Plains, mm -hmm. because we have many commercial buildings that are already two stories high that are struggling for business occupancy, but we don't have sewer over there yet. So you really, can't uh, offer this in an area where it can't be supported. Mm -hmm. uh, but none of those are residential occupancy, right? They're not now, but, but I think you'll find most of the trends are that the normal retail strips that we're all familiar with are quickly becoming things of the past. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and there's more and more vacancies. And so also those strips with the offices over, you're having a very high vacancy rate because Many people who need an office work from home, you know, with the internet, et cetera, and they only need occasional meeting space. So the concept is, is to allow people to fill up those upper floors with some residential use to at least carry some of the load of the building. But on the, if you don't have water and sewer. I just want to make sure there were none that were struggling to find residential. Mm -hmm. Well, and that too, I mean, it fits a need that, yeah. you know, despite what people think, there's a great uh, a, um, apartment need in the town of East Fishkill for to have a diversified Scott, a stock of housing. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we're lacking in many ways. Uh, you know, we did satisfy our mandate for um, affordable housing, workforce housing across streets. Statistically, we've satisfied it. I don't know if we've satisfied satisfied what the pool of uh, applicants are, but we also need other rental apartments that we don't have we have and that because of not allowing it or having it it puts pressure on for the creation of illegal apartments in residential dwellings throughout the town so mm -hmm. it's a struggle 
Any other feedback for Michelle to share with the town board? Think, Michelle, this? when do we want to finalize any fee? I know they said they've, they've put, I think they're hearing it next in February. So yeah, it's, it's, we've got a little bit of time if we want to think about it. Okay. Is there anything in here about parking garages? No. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing it. No. Um, I mean, there is some thought about potentially trying to locate a place where we might be able to have some municipal parking at some point. Um, but at this point, we don't yeah. have the demand for it. Um, so that may come with the proposals that we see in the future. Okay. So when do you want the board members to provide you with any additional feedback? Um, if, how about, let's do like two weeks from, well, let's see. Maybe. Can, we, can we say before our next meeting? Yeah. And then maybe if you have a draft of our our feedback for the town board for our next meeting, we that can would just be review terrific. it. Actually, we could do it a week before because then I could try to have the draft done for the prep meeting. Okay. okay. That works. Okay. Oh, yeah. When's the next meeting, Pam? January 15th. So that means our prep meeting would be seventh. like the 7th of January. Okay. Excellent. The next referral, this is the rezoning for 1486 Route 50, Route 82, I can read tonight, from R1 to B1. Um, this is the former fish market. Is this the one where we received the comments from Dutchess County Planning, mm -hmm. one of the ones? No okay. way, yeah. They rejected it. Okay. So this is a, um, <coughs> is everybody familiar with the location? It was the former fish market, and it's, um, currently zoned R1, and uh, the applicant has asked um, for it to be B1, but there's not a specific use in mind. Um, I did speak with them also potentially about considering some sort of maybe multifamily residential rather than um, full commercial, but they weren't really interested in that th at this time when we spoke with them about it. To me, this is a tough one just because the surrounding use is so residential. It's not. Yeah. It, it's not yeah. like some of the other things we've seen where it's a, a quasi-residential lot, but it's attached to a lot of other B1 in, right. in the area with business around it. This one is a tough one for me. I agree, and it's, it's made even tougher because a building in its current form doesn't really lend itself to residential anymore either. So. Just, and it, there is a limit, also a limited number of, of parking spaces there. Yeah. And again, this is the front, in front of the town board, so it's, do we, I think the only feedback, again, I would have is just, I think it's a tough one. Um, I don't know if others from the board have any, I don't have any better suggestions, <laughs> but. Yeah, um, they, you guys all have the county's response, and they were n not in favor of the reason. I think that one required the super majority, but that was, that would be the response to the town board, not, town board, not to right, us. It's, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for that one? Okay, and then the last one, Michelle, is the rezoning for several um, yeah. properties on Shady Lane right. and Route 52. Right, so this is the, old, the former Shade and Sun uh, property. And uh, this has been a difficult property for a, a long time, and there's a new owner who's trying, um, you know, currently to fix up the property, but also would like to um, place her business there. And her business is that she rents... Um, construction trailers and uh, porta potties and the porta potties uh, need to be stored indoors and the construction trailers typically aren't on the site but there might be maybe one or two over the course of a year because they're typically on the site that they rent at um, and I think the concept of the future concept if she was, was able to get a rezone would be to have uh, one of her <coughs> construction trailers and they're fancy construction trailers are not the typical ones that you would know they're um, they have a lot of windows and they don't look like trailers. Um, she would have a sales office there and then she would be able to store some of the, the material or the trailers and the porta potties on site. Um, so in order to do that, technically um, it's, it's really an industrial it? use, not a B1 use. Um, but in addition to that, the properties are, it, it's very, um, confusing but there's there's several different lots and they're all different 
um, zoning districts. And there's actually a residence that's on a, the B1 portion of the lot. And um, the old bins that were part of the nursery are all on the, um, residential. the residential portion of the lot. So it's kind of confused back and forth there. And then there's also um, the existing roadway that goes through the site and provides access to the business, also provides driveway access to, I think it's three homes in the rear mm -hmm. of the property. Yep. So um, it, it, it's a very difficult site. We look at it every day. <laughs> <laughs> And she has um, been trying to fix up the property and fix the existing buildings oh. that were leaking. And, it, um, yeah, and she has also offered, there's a, the front portion, I think, where there used to be the sign for the business, and then there was like a koi pond or something there when it was a nursery. She's, she's basically fixed that up, and she wants that just to stay, um, you know, undeveloped and just, just as kind of a nice, yeah, and she was going to open it up and allow folks to, to utilize it if they wanted to come sit there and whatever. That's I, not in here, is it? Hmm? What? What's not in there? The, the preservation of the section. No, she didn't put it in there. She just okay. told me that she's she's done that, and I guess there, some of the neighborhood folks that have that live in the residential neighbors around have brought their kids over. And should it be in there? I mean, isn't that kind of like a part and parcel? Well, she. I think she just applied for the rezone, so I don't know that she was putting that yeah. in. I just I'm just mentioning it because she she mentioned it to me. I believe that what we should be a little creative here. It's a very tough property, but it's a property that it seems we have an interest now to bring it into some fashion, something that would be acceptable to the community. Mm -hmm. So perhaps what we have to con consider is a conditional rezoning in that um, I don't think necessarily industrial is what's needed, but uh, as the board knows during the moratorium on industrial districts, the town has retained a, a planning consultant who's going to give us some suggestions about uses, and we may very well need in the town to create a zone that's a little different than a B1, but a little less than an I. And this might spot might lend itself to being a unique spot that you could get away with a conditional rezoning, and that is, you, it, some people might also say it's a spot zoning, but to come up with a uh, creative um, permission to do somewhat what this property owner wants to do um, and recognizing that the property is uh, I, B, residential, everything else, and to give it some viability. So my thinking would be that perhaps that's the path we should go down, uh, you know, to, to get this property restored and still give them a use because it doesn't seem like what they want to do there is too offensive. Uh, and they are seem to be very amenable to the buffer zone mm -hmm. and their other issue is they own two residents two residential existing residential uses in the rear and under our zoning ordinance you can't access residential through a business this was all pre-existing right. but it's been there and it almost is a natural road through the middle of the property and maybe in this site we have to recognize that and have the town board uh, kind of you know, take the bull by the horns and come up with something creative that may not be applicable anywhere else, but at least would work at this site. And they did mention, she did mention that she's very willing to create a buffer between yeah. the existing residential properties and any um, business use that is on her site. I have to, I mean, this, this can't be a very loud use. I mean, occasionally I'm sure she's got trucks coming in and out, but it doesn't no, sound like it's- No, there's a grade change um, between the, the, there's residential residences off here, and there's quite a grade change, I think, between, mm -hmm. between okay. them. You have package pavement right there, too. So Yeah, and yeah. Been, right, exactly. I have the industrial right, right across the street. It isn't going to be any louder than that. Yeah. Yeah. I realize this is not in front of us, but is there any way we could, like, do a site visit? Because, again, it's very difficult to see a lot of this when you're going down 52 and having near-death experiences as you're... <laughs> Absolutely. If you haven't seen it, you probably should go because yeah. it's very different with the... They, they have cleaned it up yeah. a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That I've seen. Yeah. I mean, Michelle, I guess my... I think maybe Tom just to kind of echo your comment. My What I struggle with is making it I-3 and great, this particular use, this particular applicant may have a non invasive use right but i3 allows a well, lot of things correct, in correct. the future so to do a rezone mm -hmm. 
I, you know, I don't know if there's what what the contemplation is as far as having more of with the review of all the industrial zones having more of almost a uh, maybe a special permit light eye, light eye or light eye use or something like that. This to me would fall into that, right? Mm -hmm. You're not you're not manufacturing. We don't have necessarily hazardous substances or noise or things like that. Um, and you don't have stacks of raw materials that the trucks come and dump, you know, the balance of the load that they don't need on this job and everything. Right. This is purely equipment storage type thing. So it's like a light. Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm build, afraid of using the word too, industrial. Right? I prefer some other Well, I know. And, and that's, and probably that's really why I'm hesitating because I see, you know, taking residential and moving it to industrial. To me, that's like a, almost a two-step wow. job. Yeah. As opposed to so it's more of a storage yard, but it, yeah. Yeah. but. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think the reason she asked for the industrial is that is because that's the only that's current zone that al allows the use that she wants right now. So what size you, building is she thinking about putting in there? I don't think she's even, uh, well, I think the trailer wouldn't be any bigger than what she's currently, I think they would, she'd use the existing greenhouses, fix them up, and then I think she'd just plop a trailer alongside of it just to, But I thought office. it was going to be used for storage for like porta potties and stuff like that. Uh, there's, a, there's an existing garage on the in site back up the that top. she wants to use for the porta potties. Oh, just use yeah. what's there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She's been for, fixing up that garage. Because it was and I think the other storage is, is at upper top lot, mm -hmm. and I think that's where she would put any of these trailers that might okay. come. In. And I don't know if she's gonna would contemplate adding a building at a later date or not. But that was not discussed at this time. But that kind of thing would come back to the planning board anyway Correct. for whatever whatever action. So this is another one where um, Dutchess County has recommended denial of the request. Mm -hmm. I well, actually spoke except it's a bogus denial on, on that part because they're saying. Because we have a moratorium, moratorium we can't consider right. that. Mm. But they forget that the town board has the power to establish a moratorium and has the power to modify a moratorium. So yeah. that comment's really bogus comment. And I did but, speak at, at length to the reviewer, Dutchess County, because he he was confused by this um, particular application, and he said he, he did. I did explain to him the difficulty at the site, and he and he was understanding it better once I spoke with him. So yeah, I, I think. And, and again, just as, as, as for feedback for the town, I, I do think it's difficult to go from R3 to industrial, um, but I do appreciate the, the much more benign use that's being proposed here right now. So if there was a way that we could find the right um, for these more difficult properties, I don't think this would be the only one, but um, where you could have some sort of viable use of that site that doesn't disturb the neighbors significantly. And, you know, Michelle, with this one in particular, with the residences in the back, just maybe some sort of ability to issue, I don't know if it's an acknowledgement of a pre-existing driveway or a, or something to that effect. I, I, you know, rather than having to try to dedicate a piece of this to the town, I mean, nobody wants, it doesn't make sense to do that, but. I also don't necessarily want to suddenly say, okay, well, if we make this industrial now, you can't have a residential use in the back, but there's houses already there, right? So it's. There was a plan submitted previously about rerouting that mm -hmm. driveway mm -hmm. around the uh, and upper I, end. I, don't see, around I thought it wasn't that so, viable, so though. I thought it was, I thought it was a lot of like. very expensive to build because cutting of the terrain. Cutting, cutting of yeah, slopes, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, she said she wasn't against that, but it would was too costly for her cur currently. Um, so that was, you know, she, she was fine with setting aside the property to allow that to happen in the future, but she um, could not construct it on her own at this time, was sort of the discussion that I had. So on the map we have here, an R, whatever we do, is that R3 still going to turn into an R1? Well, the problem is the, um, it's difficult to, to the portion that's residential that currently has a house, um, it, it's difficult to make it three acres because that takes away from the portion. Will it be less than two acres? Um, I believe it would be less than two acres. I think yeah. it needs to be less than two yeah, acres. Yeah, it, it probably would be. So, it, I mean, we can look at it because they, they potentially could move some of the other lines, but the problem is the driveway bisects um, the parcels right now. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 quite, it's quite challenging, this site. I don't have any other well so they bought this place what's going to happen if they don't change the zone so um she bought this place with the understanding because they they met with us before they purchased it and we explained to them that it 
there that basically what she's proposing to do wasn't allowed there and she understood that okay she purchased so she, it. yeah she she was she's the risk right uh, she lives in town and um, lives in Stormville and would like to you know have this as her business and I think she's using renting the house out in the back and but I think okay there was always an understanding yeah. well, I'm, all, well, I'm all for fixing that mess so I mean we, we've seen several proposals for this yeah, site yeah. and they've all been difficult so far this one seems the least difficult of all the difficult ones so um, I, I know that's not really advice or anything to say to the town board but I think wow. um, this is probably the best of everything we've seen so far well well put yeah it's the least difficult for us it all falls on the town <laughs> Uh, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think Michelle, for the I don't know when the town board has these back in front of them, but if anybody has any additional comments if, that they want to send to Michelle, please go ahead and do that. The solar initiative. Where is it's that? coming to you? It's coming. To you. <laughs> it's coming. Or, there's um, um, a law that the town board's open to public hearing. It's being referred to you in the county to create a special permit. Um, and it divides solar into three tiers. Tier one is when you put it on your roof, it's no change, you just go get a building permit and it's done. Tier two is when you, uh, in conjunction with a building on the property, you need to have some ground mounted, in which case it's treated as uh, accessory structures for all the setbacks and everything. So you couldn't have it in the front yard, you could have it in your rear side yards. And um, if it's on a commercial site, it has to come to the planning board to be located. And then tier three, which is the new one, is to regulate the um, uh, influx of solar farms that we're getting requests for. Mm -hmm. And under the Public Service Commission rules, a solar farm, I believe it's over two megawatts. In other words, it generates more than 100% of the electrical needs of the property. Yeah, and most of these proposals were on vacant land and they would come before the board and as long as they can cite them uh, with appropriate screening and go through a process, then you can grant a uh, special permit that allows them in the zo any zone of the town. The only one we have in the town now that's approved, it's not yet built, <laughs> is over by um, Joe's Dairy Barn. Uh, and that was done by virtue of proving to the zoning board that uh, for use variance because the property is right against the Central Hudson substation, oh, yeah. surrounded by wetlands, uh, and it, it's zoned residential and just would never be used residentially. So they were given a use variance by the uh, zoning board, and as part of that, the zoning board put the per conditions on the site, which you would normally see if it was uh, regulated by us. So we have had two or three requests now for solar farms, so this ordinance will be coming to you for your comments and the town board I think wants to address it again at their January meeting which is the end of the month after your meeting is there a minimum acreage on that Pardon me? is there a minimum, minimum uh, yes acreage? it's uh, don't ask me to say okay. it right okay. now but it's yes because under, the way they have to be laid out they require a minimum acreage some of the unique things is that under the National Electric Code you have to have a nine-foot fence around it in order to comply with it um, and there's certain ground structures issues. I know they're building a really big one in Kingston right now. Yeah. Did we contemplate anything other than solar? Wind turbines, anything like that? No, 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 just, just solar panels. Okay. Yeah. Well, you laugh, but when night. you drive yeah. west oh, yeah. through New York State, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, they're all there. Yeah. that's yeah, all becoming there. a very common yeah. sight, yeah. so. Martha's Vineyard. I don't think we're windy enough. Last night we were. Uh, I might beg to differ with you. Maybe I'm <laughs> and you man. might be surprised. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So just solar for right now. Excellent. All right. Anything else for this evening? I think we have a John Jay student in the back. Yeah. Ha. <laughs> nice. All right, young man. <laughs> you need us to sign a form. <laughs> um, all right. So do I have a motion to adjourn? Everybody have a very happy and healthy, safe holiday season. Thank you and to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. moved. Thank you. So moved. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank That's you. That's it for 29.